always the case. Um, well, with us today, I'm very excited. Um, we have uh, Hall Davidson. I, I know a lot of you folks may have heard him speak before. Um, he's going to be talking about artificial intelligence. And for me personally, it's just a, uh, it's a topic that's just fascinating because um, I think, you know, with, with the technology such as Alexis and so forth coming into our homes and so forth, the next generation of students, um, I mean, that's what they're going to be expecting in the classrooms, you know, and, and you know, how are we going to, how we, as, you know, as, you know, how are we going to provide that leadership to our schools and so forth to, to roll that technology out? Um, just one more quick blurb uh, before I turn it over to Hall here. Uh, don't forget on uh, December the 4th, uh, we'll also be holding our National Leadership Summit out in Phoenix, Arizona. It's, a, it's right before the uh, AESA conference. We'll be doing a pre-conference session. Um, if you want any more information about that, please feel free to email me, check out Namtech webpage, and um, you know, we hope to see you there. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Hall. Hey, great to be here. So listen, I, uh, I thought I was gonna do this webinar on AR, VR. Uh, I can certainly switch over, but is it, what were people expecting? I could, have, I could have written this wrong. I can certainly swap, but uh, were, we, uh, were we doing, I have on my calendar, it's AR, VR, Jeff. Are we, are we doing uh, AI? We're expecting oh, AI. Okay. Um, great, okay. Yeah, I, I, had, I had AI down, but, uh, but certainly. Let's do AI then, that's great, okay. The opening slides will change a little bit. <laughs> All right, here we go. I love doing AI. I think it's uh, I think it's hugely important. So let me sw let me just swap out the decks here. This is good. Okay. That's uh, easy enough to do. And then we'll we'll do some screen sharing here. So the I've got all the I posted the handouts in the um, in the chat room, and the handouts I'm going to change it. I I, I built an AR VR, but uh, we can change that for, um, for um, the AI one, which is going to come up right now. The AI one is actually up there already, but um, this will let us do it in a little bit different way. All right, so, whoops, wrong one. So I like doing the AI. Certainly, uh, artificial intelligence is huge. I can just start talking about it. The, one of the big issues is that we're having trouble getting it into schools, and we are going to uh, get started on that now. All right, so I'm going uh, to launch this. Uh, I haven't reviewed this since I did it last, which is in June, but uh, let's get started with it, and then um, we can go. So, Jeff, should I just share my screen? Certainly. All right. All right, let me just take off. Uh, here we go. All right, so I'm going to um, click back here, uh, share my screen. And I, I just got your, uh, your um, uh, text, uh, Jeff, asking if I was going to be here. So, yes, I'm here, just so you know. All right, we're going to talk about um, AI. Anybody see the screen? See the screen okay? What we're going to uh, try to do is, uh, everybody see the screen? If not, uh, Jeff's monitoring the text, and you can let me know. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about some of the tools, devices, and websites that let you get started. Uh, there's really a lot of good reasons to, to play with AI in the classroom. Uh, and we're going to talk about the real world reasons and then really part about how it can enhance instruction. So part of this is that uh, the real world stuff, and maybe everybody knows this by now. When I used to talk about this, I'd have to spend 30 minutes convincing people that AI is on the way. If anybody, uh, just put in the chat room if you think AI is a coming presence and will affect everything, because that's the idea. Anyway, there's Mark Cuban basically saying, uh, learn it or be a dinosaur. This is Stephen Hawking's, and really you can look at these quotes all day long, uh, but it is a, it's, it, it can be a very big deal. It's gonna change everything. Uh, we, need to, we need to change the literature that our kids are reading. We need to get them ready for a, what's gonna be a very, very big shift. Some of the interesting part in terms of public education is, is one of the things a Wall Street Journal article here that you see on the screen is talking about. And do you see the big screen or do you see the, um, or do you see me in the little screen too? I bet you do. Hang on, let me unplug the big screen. There we go. Now let's swap. 
Because you see the next slide and all that stuff, I'll bet. Yeah, we do. We see the, your first slide and the next slide. It just doesn't have the same impact. All right, here we go. So here's the, uh, I'm going to move this over to the side. The, one of the things about public school and getting kids into AI is as all industry and as information, the government moves into AI, we really want to have a diverse staff. Uh, people are making mistakes all the time uh, because they don't have diversity in the way they build their AIs. And imagine what difference that makes if you're doing a, a facial recognition software for Delta Airlines, who just announced they're doing facial recognition. You don't have anybody with a headscarf in, you're gonna be in trouble when, you're, you're, when your uh, machine starts kicking out a lot of different things. You've gotta have people that have different haircuts and wear different hats and wear headscarves. All that's really important. Of course, that's what we have in public schools. We have all those crazy things. So we want, our kids to move into this workforce because it's going to help everybody all the way along. The, um, oops, there we go. There we are. Here's, if you're looking at uh, job, jobs and things like this, and you can look at your metro area, the link is in the, uh, is in the handout, but uh, certainly according to the Brookings Institute, um, you have some areas are going to be impacted by almost 50% of uh, of jobs as, as AIs began to move in. Now, AI, like automation, is gonna create more jobs than it, uh, than it threatens. Uh, everybody sort of forgets that part of it, but it means you gotta be ready to talk to AIs, build AIs, work with AIs, and that'll make a difference. You can look up your actual thing here. LA is one of the big ones. And here's part of the deal, and I hope you can hear these videos, is that I call the kids that are coming into school now Gen Alexa, right? I don't know what else to call them, but they are the ones that were brought up with a, smart, with a smart speaker in their house. And smart speakers, in terms of uh, adaption, by the way, have, um, have become popular in a trend faster than smartphones. Smart speakers are entering American homes faster than smartphones, which is pretty amazing. And here's, here's what it means for schools. I hope you can hear this. Let me know if you can't. Play old McDonald had a farm. Yeah, happy kid. So I'll bet um, that a lot of you have experiences like this, but here's that kid. And what's he doing? It's like, I don't know what that Darth Vader move is to get Alexa to stop, uh, but that's what that kid's doing, which is, which is pretty amazing. Here's how it translates into schoolwork, right? You got a smart speaker. So there's a parent catching your kid uh, who's actually having Alexa do the homework. Now, the, the thing is, maybe that's a good skill set for a kid to have. Uh, who knows? I will tell you this, though, uh, and I wish I could see your faces, but remember the thrill of riding your first bicycle? Uh, kids statistically are not riding as many bicycles as they used to. Uh, so it may be that the first thing that people hear is, I remember the first day the machines understood me. I could talk to Alexa. Hey, Google understood me. I mean, maybe that's going to be a big deal. There's no reason we can't start that in school. So uh, I'm going to skip some of this, but it's how AIs are learning. Yeah, Siri, do us a favor and add Worcestershire sauce to my shopping list. I've added it. It did You're it. bleeding great, Siri. Add Worcestershire sauce to my grocery list. Anyway, the idea is that uh, students with accents, students with, uh, 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 with a different way of speaking, the AIs are catching up to that. Those are just the big ones that you saw, but it was, it's amusing. You see a lot of people with heavy accents and, and uh, Siri, uh, Google, and uh, Amazon's Echo uh, figure them out pretty well. Anyway, the artificial intelligence, if you look for a definition of it, uh, and it's kind of hard to sort it out. It's really technology that can make decisions based on data. That's really what it is. And kids need to start understanding that. They, 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 they think of it as a machine becoming a person, uh, which it's not. Uh, it performs tasks that most people uh, associate with humans, 
but it's not a human. It's making decisions based on data, and that's all that it's doing. So understanding that leads to the understanding of data, which leads to the understanding of how all these machines work, which it can impact instruction in a very good way. Computational thinking can have impact in language arts and social studies and other things. Anyway, so it all leads to that. Uh, I was in Houston <laughs> when I delivered this, and uh, one in four jobs in Houston are high risk. Houston's alarmed by this. Um, other cities are excited by it. It's hard to say. Here's a, here's a, a way that machines can do a human-like task uh, based on the assumption of data. So I, hopefully I'll remember where's Waldo. And uh, Jeff, if anybody in the chat room does not remember where's Waldo, uh, let me know. So here, here's where's Waldo. And you know, where's Waldo? Oh, I wish we could make this interactive because somebody would explain to me that it's a book you look at. A, a kid will spend a lot of time identifying that, that face. However, if you take a, a cheap camera and a little toy hand and put it on a robot arm, which uh, middle school and high school kids are certainly doing, uh, you could do this. You can let it feed it some images and then it trains. The training will depend on the actual software that does, but there you go. And then you show it a book. It looks at all the faces, uh, finds Waldo, and then points to it. Now, it isn't just that um, it's been fed all the pictures of where's Waldo, uh, you can't do that. What you do is put it in training mode, and that's part of what artificial uh, intelligence is, what computer science is, and then it can deduce uh, what, where's, where, where's Waldo uh, from all the other pictures that it had. There's, there's little engaging games that, that teach more about that, but anyway, that's what Towards Waldo is. Uh, they are getting AIs to the point where, as, as we were feeding where's Waldo pictures to the machine, and again, it's not just it finds all the old Where's Waldos that you fed it, it learns what makes a Where's Waldo face, the glasses and the color and the hair, anyway. Uh, they've learned that you can turn some things by just feeding them YouTube. They've been doing this for a couple of years. So you have an AI and it watches YouTube and it learns inflections and, um, and sequencing. And again, not what students might think it's learning, but it is building a database based on certain things that you see. So then you start looking at YouTube in a little bit different way. Anyway, there's um, a lot of, this is a free program to kind of help uh, teachers teach about, let's see if I can move my, if you're looking at my screen. Uh, and again, it's in the handout, but if we look at this, one of the things you can kind of see is that, and these are the assets that, uh, that are out there. Uh, there's a thing called the curiosity machine. Again, this is a, a, a thing you can do in the classroom. It's intended to be doing the classroom. These are 20 design challenges um, to talk about innovation, and you'll see some of those. So one of those in there, and I know I'm going fast. That's why there's a handout posted or will be posted online uh, on artificial intelligence. And again, you can go back and look at the track here. But on artificial intelligence, when you look at those challenges there, you have a chance to build a neural network. Build a neural network. What, what is a neural network? It's, it's the way a machine learns. A lot of people call it a neural network. There's also a parallel processing, self-driving car game. All those things are there. These are all free. Um, good way to get into the game. We'll, we'll hopefully play with one of those later. Let's build a neural network. Uh, and you kind of see over in the corner that you're building it with cups and strings. Uh, you're making data decisions in the same way that a, um, a machine will. So you got cups, index cards, things like that. So it's a way to start teaching about how machines get data that has nothing to do with, oh, they're so smart, and, oh, they have cameras and all, all that stuff. It's pretty good, but um, I think I've got a video clip here. Yeah. So these are data sets. Then you got to develop a network that feeds the data sets. Thank you. 
anyway, you get the idea. Lots of, um, lots of um, people might say that that's not a neural network because you'd have to connect many of those things together to really make a network, but it does give you the idea, uh, and again, it's like where's Waldo, which of this data sets are the ones that I want? So at the end of the thing, you end up with, with that little round beads. That's what you're looking for. So at, at SD, um, I asked this question, and Jeff, you can monitor the chat room, but what percentage of millennial parents would let AI robots operate on their kids? This is from India, uh, the UK, uh, the USA, developed worlds. What, you know, robots are coming, ah, what percentage of millennial parents would let AI robots operate on their own children? What do you think? Take, take a guess. Uh, 15%, 18%, 62%. If you guys want to just put it in the chat room, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Big question, of course, is it covered by healthcare? Ah, ah, ah. Uh, we, there, we got a 30%. So I've seen I, I gave you the multiple choice here, which I should have given you sooner. I sort of forgot it was in there. So one, two, three, or four. That's uh, 15%, which is one of these things. 89%. And remember, um, there are a lot of people who are scared of machines. They're scared of robots. They're scared of what goes on. Uh, but that's how it works. So let's see in the actual, oh, it's still chatting in there. Yeah, 62, 15. Yeah, remember, if you have children, uh, your kid has a, uh, something that needs surgery, you can let a, a, a machine, a device like the Welsh Waldo device that holds a scalpel, you can let it do What percentage of parents can do that? The answer is 62%. So, and this was a year ago. So even a year ago, you have 62% of millennial parents going, oh, robots are scary. Oh, I, I have to do it on my kid. And I don't know if you know anybody that's had an operation done by a robot. Uh, I have. Uh, it was very high-priced healthcare, um, uh, but it was for prostate surgery, something that uh, all men will need if they live long enough. Uh, and it was a robot. Guy hung upside down. The robot, little thing. The doctor was on the other side by the controls, but the robot, whose hand is steady, by the way, and who's just as good at nine o'clock at night as it is at nine in the morning. Um, something to consider you know one of the old doctor tricks is always get the first surgery of the day because you're thinking better so anyway machines it's all the same all right that was uh, from usa today so it must be right ignite my future uh, is also a free resource you can use at your schools ignite my future in school.org uh, this is from tata which is a consultancy service uh, and the idea is to make computational thinking a foundation skill because it is foundational skill for 21st century success or so tata believes so they uh, spent some money and wrote and, and assembled some pretty good lesson plans. Here's some of those impact stories from the field. Again, if you're trying to convince your staff that uh, this is something that needs to be integrated or your district leadership, uh, here are these stories. Here they are already there, ready to go. Uh, also on the blog, uh, you've got material. This is from, uh, from this year. Computational thinking skills, uh, stuff from schools now. There's one in uh, Milton, Massachusetts. There's one in, um, in Washington. Uh, for teachers, there's a nice little thing in there. It says, hey, now where to get started? This is the links on that website. How does it relate to my subject area? Okay, so we probably all understand that AIs are having a, will have a heavy impact on everything from the way we text on our phones, right? The, uh, when Jeff sent me his video, his little text today saying, are you gonna be there? Uh, it was, it was a spell check, which meant an AI was looking over his shoulder. Uh, How does it relate to my subject of when I want to teach it? Well, here's the links. Again, this is in that website, how it connects to language arts. Uh, there's curriculum connection in math, transdisciplinary skills, science, and social studies. So, and, and you could, if we had time, and, uh, and, and we don't, but we could break you into groups, and each of you could go into one of these things and come back and say, here's how it now impacts my curriculum. So your task sort of is to go back and try to do this uh, in your own in your own districts or your own schools or maybe in your own classrooms. That's how stuff connects. Uh, computational resources, including uh, sorting activities. Again, remember the fundamental is it's it's a machine that sorts data to make conclusions. Right. The more data, the better conclusion it can make. So there are data sets that are included in this website, ignitemyfutureinschools.org. There are sites that are already here. So there's um, uh, a data set from the government. You can go look through and there's little exercises and how to do that. So this is a pretty good exercise too. I just show you this too. Here's computer science without a computer. Some of you may be aware of this, uh, but you can actually, there's sorting algorithms, a lot of other stuff, but 
this is things that any teacher can do without electricity, without a computer, uh, that again shows you the way that these machines think. So the electricity part of an AI really just lets things speed up. Uh, the algorithm can be, you know, but simple. I mean, it's, it, it's just the ability to do it over and over again so fast that makes a big difference. Anyway, so those are the different activities. Uh, here's something, and la mira es en español también. So if you have students that are, or parents that are stronger in Spanish than in English, aquí está el libro, pero en español. So it's the, um, the Spanish version of the same thing. So that's kind of nice to know. Uh, they did a video challenges. Uh, this was last year. I'm assuming they're doing it again. Not sure. Um, We'll see what the winners are, but if a student can submit an idea in writing or on video about solving problems in this way, somebody's going to win $10,000, total 33,500 prizes. You think you got kids that could do this? Yes. Unfortunately, submissions, oh, it looks like submissions, I have to see. I know this is last year's. Oh, yeah, because the winner announcement was March of this year. So we'll see if they continue that for next year. That I don't know about. Uh, again, here's other, lots of other stuff. One of the things about when kids win uh, prizes, they always give them a big check like this, and you have to explain to a kid what a check is, just so you know. Okay, so, uh, in terms of education, uh, this is one of the things we've done with discovery education, is we try to incorporate more and more AI in there, and here's part of the reason why. Uh, if I know that you're a language arts teacher in these grade levels and you do stuff, it means that when you come to the core resource, you know, you pick the one that you want and the, the way that the page will then construct itself will depend on how that looks. And it means that, and this is the, the new interface for discovery. And I, I think everybody's going this way. I'm going to show you the discovery because um, uh, I help work on it. I'm happy with it. I'm proud of it. But you can see that a lot of this material is then sorted so you don't have to search through 200,000 200, assets in this, this library, which is good and bad. The good is that they're all those assets. The bad is they're all those assets. How do you find it? So you let an AI help you sort that out. So these are virtual field trips. And uh, the more you use it, uh, the more it will learn. And that's sort of the way it works. Uh, if you're going to put this stuff in the classroom, here's a good way to start. And I would say, and again, uh, just watching the chat there, so you can, you can let me know how that works. Yeah, we did, we did have one question come up quick. Yeah. Um, do you know of any school using Amazon, Alexa, Google Home, or any devices like that with that in law, 2D, and data privacy? None of the schools around here are ready to implement these. Uh, well, well, we'll talk about that. We're talking about FERP and COPA a little later on. But yeah, there are lots of schools using it. In fact, you can go on and find donors choose applications to buy this stuff for the classroom. Uh, the, uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to get you excited about this, and we're going to talk about how parents can be very scary about this. Um, so if we're going to do this, uh, but yes, we can, we can go through this fast. But yes, these things are cheap, $29. If I had to get one, I'd, uh, for that money, I'd write a donor's choose campaign and get them both. If you have both of these in the classroom, and these are the prominent ones, then you can see how different they are, which is kind of important. Lots of exercises online of teachers that are using these already. So this is a school in Fullerton, Fullerton, California. And they're doing an exercise with students the students have a lot of, there's a challenge you can see. So they do some things right and some things wrong. Um, uh, I mean, students and AIs. AIs do some things right and some things wrong. And part of what the learning process is, is to see what they're doing wrong uh, and, and, uh, and how kids interface and find the correct ways to information. Anybody with an iPhone has already figured this out with Siri. Siri, uh, on my phone, the best way to use it is really to turn her off completely. Apple kind of got behind in this game. So anyway, people are scared. Uh, the networks are scared. Uh, you can't go into a school with this without making sure you have everybody's consent. Uh, people are worried that um, they're being spied on. They're right. Uh, people are worried that AIs are going to be everywhere. 
there, right? Uh, we have to, and this is a whole digital citizenship conversation, which we can have at another time, but boys and girls' privacy is dead. It's going to be dead. Uh, we can, this is not what you tell the parents, <laughs> but, but the truth is we're all toast and it's dead and we're happy it's dead. Why? Because if I've got an AI and a camera and I can prevent a school shooting, pretty good data that you can, then you want to do that. If I can go on social media and find out that somebody's going to shoot up a church, you know what? We all want that. And in order to want that, we need to understand what it means. Anyway, uh, getting the boundaries of privacy is something we have to do as a society. Uh, remember, we're in a country where we have the Miranda Act, where you can confess to a crime and it doesn't matter because it doesn't count. Uh, we've been pretty good about privacy in this country. I'd, I'd rather be here than anywhere else on the planet in this new age. Anyway, so here's, here's the thing. So Louisiana is a great case in point. Louisiana has the strictest student privacy rules uh, in the country. And if you read it really well, you can't collect data. You can't use it. You can't, anyway, it means you can't really do grades. How do you do grades? Grades are an assessment information of students' work that goes into a pile and get sorted and evaluated. That's what scares people to death. So uh, Louisiana's um, Department of Ed wrote, and the links are in here, but wrote a thing on how to make it all work anyway. So the, uh, you want an example of, uh, of the farthest end you can go, go in and look at Louisiana's um, policy and then what the uh, Director of Data Governance, Privacy and Ed Tech at the Louisiana Department of Education uh, wrote about how to use that. So these are things you can do. There's a sample uh, FERPA uh, consent letter. Uh, if you don't know what FERPA is, put that in, in the box. We'll talk about it. There's the COPA consent letter. Uh, the first one came from the U.S. Department of Ed. The second one came from uh, the National Association of Secondary School Principals. Uh, you, you need these if you're going to put an artificial intelligence device in a classroom. Uh, it does uh, collect data. And it might say, and they do, that it's not going to be able to tell one student from another and you have one account. And it, but the truth is that sooner or later, it's going to be able to tell one voice from another and sooner or later, it'll tell uh, one, uh, one Julio from another and, uh, and Karen from Karen. Uh, so we need to know what they are. And again, the truth is, this isn't just going to be in classrooms. This is in London, it's in every street corner. Um, uh, in other developed countries, it's sort of everywhere and, and, uh, people, uh, are adjusting to it, but it's not going away. No way it's going away. So anyway, this is part of what we have to wrestle with. And should it be part of social studies? Yes. Anyway, we can answer more questions about that. Here's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, these are, I did this. These are the, the true faces. It listened to voices and built these faces. So that's what AIs can do. I can't really see it. Let me, I can move around again. Well, anyway, you get the idea. So it heard these voices and then built these faces. <laughs> One of the things AIs can't quite do yet is uh, understand when people have colored their hair. Ah, oh, look at that. Or perhaps they have cosmetic surgery. Uh, but when you hear a voice, it resonates through your skull, which means that it has a certain, you can probably guess what your nose is if you're an AI. I can't, but an AI. And then from that, you go on and on. Anyway, so the idea is uh, this is how good it's getting. Uh, is this going to go away? No. Are people going to be able to shut this off? Maybe. That would require action by our legislatures, uh, which we've worked with before, right? Uh, again, Louisiana shut it down. We'll see what happens there. They didn't shut it down. That's wrong. They didn't shut it down, but they did put in some pretty stringent requirements. So people are afraid of something we have to do. But again, this is a conversation we take to the di digital citizenship range. Uh, in the meantime, let's talk about what we could do once we've, once we've uh, gotten over that. And again, that's, that's a, a whole other conversation, a conversation maybe we should start having because it's getting bigger. Uh, it's not going away. Uh, the privacy conversation. Anyway, the, um, uh, let, let's assume that you get permission from every parent and you can put that in a classroom. Here's a couple of just a techniques you do. You get a remote. You want to mute the microphone. I'm going to try to get move myself down here. Uh, you mute the, mute the microphone uh, so that whenever you talk to your kid whose name is Alexa, <laughs> use that. You can change with, elect, with this. You can change this device, the, the Amazon Echo. You can change the device 
so that it responds to computer or responds to Echo instead of Alexa. But all those are conversational problems. Uh, you know, you can't, I have one set to computer. Every time I talk about computers, it comes on. So that's no good. Anyway, so you keep it muted in the classroom. You push that little, little microphone. You can also mute uh, uh, the Google device. And then you get a remote if you want to do the yeah, extra 29 bucks. Uh, but it means that you can uh, then uh, turn it on and off. And these work really well in a classroom. I've walked around with these in very large rooms. And you can hold down the, uh, the microphone button there. And then only by holding it down can you engage the, the device. Uh, you can also buy, you see there, a snot guard for it in case you're dealing with elementary kids and coals. And you can clean it off every time you share it. But th those are works. It also comes with a little device so you can feed it into a boom box or a sound system or whatever you want. And then, um, uh, again, it leaves you more control. It doesn't have to be just out there remote. The, uh, I show a boom box because there actually are boom boxes in classrooms. Uh, here's a teacher from Alaska. Uh, the superintendent told me she's one of the best teachers they have. And this is a video for, I don't know if you can hear it. All right, so there she is, and she, uh, uh, she uses a, a voice remote, and it's the best thing. So she, her kids can talk about temperatures around the world. You know, one kid's doing Bombay, and one kid's doing Los Angeles, one kid's doing Sitka, or whatever they do, or the price of something. Or, uh, but they can use the, they're using Alexa in a meaningful way, but she uses the remote, so you don't listen to it all the time. Anyway, that's something else. Here's the Donors Choose article. Uh, this is not new, but uh, thank you, Mrs. Hanks. Um, and you can actually um, probably copy and paste that if you want. Anyway, she got uh, more money than she maybe would, would need today, but she talked about it. And one of the things she said was she really likes uh, to use it for music, uh, for music. And uh, it turned out that uh, music, it's like, can we talk about that in schools? Yeah. Turns out that research showed, this is for uh, a high poverty urban school, but that when you have ambient noise, meaning music, that would amount to about 10% of the gap in students' mathematics achievement. That's pretty interesting. Fixed on ambient noise. Anyways, that includes music. Here's a teacher, by the way, a middle school teacher at a conference. I'm presenting at TCA. And he says, that is absolutely right. Uh, it does help them study more. It does help uh, their focus. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm putting these presentations from now on. So there he is. That's Jordan, who is a classroom teacher that says, man, the ability to target music is huge and if you think about it music is identification music if it's your music it says and you have to filter the music like you filter everything else but if you say you like this music i don't like it but this is your class we're going to play that today so we can work or however you want to distribute uh the ambient noise but now we have more control over that than we did before right uh when i was getting my teacher credential lots of people had lots of records that's how old i am and they'd play music but it was it took a lot of work and not everybody did it, but everybody was effective. Suddenly, we have the ability to do this in a much easier way. And that sort of leads to the fact that AIs are also gonna make teaching easier and more effective. All right, so there he is. If you're gonna do this in your, if you wanna start with kids, and uh, in an in-person workshop, we could do this in person. Uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, but if you go to Amazon, the blueprints.amazon.com, your kids can actually, without really coding, command Alexa to do things. So here's the fun and games. I usually use family trivia, but again, there's, if you go there, you can actually open up, looks like kind of like this, family trivia, uh, all about mom. I can tell you a story about that. So one, one of the things that they did for Mother's Day is that a student could, uh, let's see if I can do the, um, Oh, I don't have it up. I'll show you later, but you actually just type in stuff and then Alexa will say what you type in about your mother when you say, tell me all about mom. Uh, so we did, I had my kids do this for my wife who like cried and laughed and all this stuff as, as a story about her, a personal story about her life, her growing up, uh, went in there. Then Father's Day came around. They did nothing for me, just, just for the record. Here's what it looks like. Uh, it comes with a template. So this is the family trivia one. Uh, customize the questions and answers. So uh, which city in South America my mom's parents from. And essentially, you just type in new stuff. What city in Europe are the grandparents from? Liverpool or whatever you want to do. So, or you can make this any question. It doesn't have to be about cities or anything. Anyway, so you sort of, you code it. And uh, it's not really coding, I'm sorry. 
you can, you're just typing it in. But then when you say to Alexa, Alexa, uh, mine is called Classroom Gold. Alexa, open Classroom Gold. And then it starts this uh, trivia game about, I usually use facts for a state that I'm in, state history facts. So I use this to build state history facts. And then kids kind of have a, a game. It's like Jeopardy. You know, they have questions and they have answers and there's applause and whatever sound effect a kid will put in there will then construct the game experience. So yes, you get the benefit of, of playing the game, but you also get the benefit that someone's building this into a device that is telling them the weather in the news. In other words, they have control. All right, um, you can also actually use programming. Uh, you can program for skills, 80,000, it's probably up over 100,000 now, but these are the languages that you can use, Node.js, Java, C Sharp, Python. That means that you can do that. This is a school in, uh, in Prince, uh, Prince George's County. It's actually called Prince George County. Anyway, I've been there. Uh, but they have, um, uh, it's a high impact school. Uh, Amazon came in and they had their school, their kids actually code uh, for language barriers, fundamental math skills, college application process. So Alexa skills are things that you enable that can do specific things. And that's a coding thing, but you can do that too. I could say, for example, uh, uh, ask, and I can say the name because I have one on my desk over here, but ask ISTE where Hall Davidson sessions are. And if I had coded that, anybody with that, anybody with that device um, could, uh, could, um, could do that. And then uh, ask Alexa where I was and they could tell me that what room I was in all that kind of stuff. Anyway, stuff like that. It's a little bit of code, looks like that. Um, but you get the idea. So those are two things that where you can use, bring uh, an echo dot into the classroom to leverage everything from coding to fundamental template driven computer stuff. Anyway, okay. Any questions, uh, Jeff, about that before we go into machine learning? I don't want to go too long. I know we have time for questions. Yeah, we had a, had a couple things. Um, in uh, schools in Cincinnati, they're actually using the Alexa devices. So uh, or our Arlene um, is one of our representatives from uh, the ESC in Ohio there. And oh, great. And, um, and then she, she was going to, she's going to check. She wasn't sure how they were handling their, uh, sample letters and so forth for the, uh, you know, the use, usage. Oh, that's great. If she could share that, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. I sort of, I've adapted them myself and written them myself. And then I found the one from the government, the one from the principals, but it would be great to see what they did. You do want to get permission from everybody. And there will be people, if you're teaching in middle school and you have 150 kids, of people that say they can't do it. So uh, those kids don't get to play or, or, you know, or code or whatever they do. But anyway. All right. So let's go on and I'll try to leave, more time for questions. Ah, machine learning, if we're talking about AIs and we're talking about it in schools, we really need to know what machine learning is. And that's the ability to learn without being specifically programmed. So uh, explicitly programmed, which means that, that you don't have to show everywhere's, a machine everywhere's Waldo picture. Uh, it sees enough that it can then learn uh, without being explicitly programmed. Uh, this is a book that I really like. This is a reference. You can see it. Machine Learning for Absolute Beginners. I got it off, gosh, uh, Amazon. Uh, but there you go. Anyway, it's, it's a good explanation. Here's sort of a, a, a sample for it. Let's say you get home from work and either on your way home, because cars now have clicks in them too. You know, you say, I want to play, play The Killing Moon for me. Play I Die if these are all songs, right? Play A Broken Arc of so You're playing all these songs and uh, we could maybe hear clips of these, but here they are. And then one day uh, you say, play a song for me. And it knows uh, just because of the data that all these are songs from the 80s. So it might say something like this. So that's kind of machine learning. It's seen what you've done. You haven't specifically told it you like the 80s, but it's deduced that. It might also recognize that all of these are songs about relationship problems, right? Every one of these is about a relationship problem. So the machine might ask you this. Would you like me to connect you to match.com? Would you like me to connect you to match.com? Because it knows that you're in a relationship, <laughs> you're having problems anyway. It's a joke, but you get the idea. So machine learning is something that's important. Um, if you do, oh, I can show you. I'll show you an example. Uh, we have time. Yeah, let me, 
let me, um, uh, you can see, can you still see my PowerPoint? If I launch um, Chrome, can you, can you see Chrome, Jeff? Uh, not yet. Yeah, actually do see Chrome. Yep. Oh, you do see, okay, let me share again. This is a great little way to do machine intelligence. Um, where's, here's Chrome. So, okay, don't read my mail. What we're gonna do is go and look at um, a thing called Google AI, let's see, AI experiments. So these are really cool experiments, and I'm gonna do one or two of these, and you can see how it works. It's kind of fun. Uh, this is called Quick Draw. I'm gonna launch the experience, and then we're gonna talk about how it works. So in person, this is really fun to do. Uh, we're gonna do this right now. It's gonna ask me to draw six things, and I'm gonna try to draw them, and the machine's gonna try to deduce what it is that I'm drawing. So here we go. Draw bread. All right, so I'm gonna. I see line or square or dishwasher. I see suitcase or mug or uh -oh. pan or cupcake. I see backpack or bucket. Oh, I know, it's bread. Now, how did it know bread from that stuff? Anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. Animal migration. Oh, interesting. Hey, Hal. Yeah. Your email's showing up right now. Oh, you're kidding. No. <laughs> so I wonder why. Okay, let me close the email. It'll do this again. Okay, so let me share. No, not that. Here we go. Animal Sorry, migration. I get it. All right, you see now what I'm drawing? Does draw a hedgehog under 20 seconds? All right, hedgehog. So I'm going to try to draw a hedgehog. Animal I see necklace or circle or apple or pear. I see mouse or cat or teapot, or rhinoceros, or trumpet. I see black cat, or raccoon, or tiger, or bear. I see cow, or dog, or pig, or fox, or squirrel. I don't really know what a hedgehog looks like. I'm kind of at a disadvantage here. Okay, there we Sorry, go. Sorry, I couldn't guess it. Blueberry, I'm gonna try to rub blueberry. I see circle, or bracelet, or eyeglasses, or necklace. I see motorbike, or peas, or bicycle, or camouflage. I see water, or animal migration, or confetti. I see stethoscope. I'm stumped. I see mouse. Well, or, stem. or pizza. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So why not? It's because no one has drawn a blueberry like that. How very odd. Here's an elephant. I bet it gets this pretty quick. Let's see. I see spoon or line or marker or hockey stick or mustache. I see bird or guitar or violin or steak or parrot. I see cello or shoe or angel or sheep or horse. Oh, I know. It's elephant. Go figure. Last one. Here we go. Skateboard. I see line. Oh, I know. It's skateboard. Okay. So when we go back and review that, um, it, 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 you think of it like a, like a party game, but it's not. Uh, the machine knows when I start to draw. Notice it didn't get bread at the beginning. I don't have it like a slice of bread to me, but when I drew it into a loaf, then it got it. Doesn't mean that I was being right or wrong. It means that of the thousands of people who have drawn this, and here's examples, this is what it looks like. My second match was a sleeping bag, third was a, a microwave, because the AI is trying to figure that out. So it looks at, there's bread. Here is a um, bread drawn by other people. So if I'd done it like that, I would have gotten it right away. I, that's not what I think of as bread. Anyway, doesn't mean that I'm wrong, and that's the whole point. Doesn't mean, oh, I, I wanted to get six out of six. No, 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 the machine's trying to get six out of six. The machine's trying to get six out of six by recognizing what you draw. Now that thing that looks like a saw to me that I drew is gonna be in the database. So anyway, that's how it works. And for all of them, elephants, again, it got all these elephants right away. That's a parrot? That's so not a parrot. Anyway, this is AIs. So uh, it's a good way to play and go, why would it think that that's a parrot? Because when it asked to draw a parrot, somebody did that. Anyway, they're not that smart, these AIs. And this is a good thing, a good experiment to do. So that's uh, experiments with Google.com. All right, so um, let's go back to sharing. Maybe if I just shared my desktop, I would have um, would have saved all that trouble. So let's go in, I'll share the, the finals here of the PowerPoint. Hopefully you'll see this, yes. Um, so that's, that's two easy ways to kind of get it into the classroom, uh, I think, uh, to talk about machine intelligence. All right, we've seen all this, Mr. Davidson. You don't need to see this, no, 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 no. Um, 
for teachers, I like to show this. This is a thing you can do now. Uh, I could right now in the, in the discovery service, and I've done this before, use this as an in-service. I can go with 200,000 assets. I can do a search for uh, Civil War reading material. I'm looking for text in the Civil War. I'm teaching that. I want it to be broken out by Lexi levels so that I can assign this in a Chromebook classroom uh, through my uh, dashboard uh, so that a kid reading from, so you can see on the corner, there's 750 to uh, 740 to, to 1010 Lexi levels. I can assign that then to, uh, to my student. I have a class of one, thank you. Uh, but I can do that, or I can do a search because I have also higher level readers, and I can go up to the, you see on the Lexile scores over there, I can search by Lexile levels again, and I can assign that, that to somebody else. Now, that's a great way to differentiate, a great way to personalize learning. It's also a complete pain. Who's gonna do this for every kid in their classroom? I, mean, I know there are teachers that are, but what about if I could just say, hey, find me a passage and assign it to Ben Mondrian? That's coming. That's going to be in classrooms in three years, five years. Somebody's going to crack this pretty soon. Think how much easier that makes teaching. One of the things we've learned is that uh, AIs will never replace teachers. Uh, it's pretty exciting about that. Um, anyway, so that's it. This is me uh, doing that experiment with, on a virtual field trip. We don't need to care about that. This is a, a, a kid. People, and I'll close on this, then, we, then we'll get questions. But uh, people have asked about jobs being replaced, and there is a, this is uh, Kai Fu Lee's talk. The people that are, are replaced last are teachers. Um, we're going to need more teachers, not less. Uh, teaching is going to get easier, not harder. Uh, this is a really silver lining to AIs. Um, and if you can, John Oliver did a thing on this. So here's, here's him talking about jobs in the future. Laura, do you think a robot could do my job in the future? What is your job anyway? Uh, we, so we take a big story uh, and we try and inject it with as much nuance as we can. And so we really try and get a deep dive in, into complicated issues. Um, and, and then I present our work you know, to, to the audience at the end of the week. Do you think a robot could do that? Yep. Well, what can I do? What can you do? That is actually a good question. You can do a series of non-routine tasks that require social intelligence, complex critical thinking, and creative problem solving, okay? Okay. Okay, can you repeat that back to me? I want to do a series of non-routine tasks. I want to do a series of non-routine tasks. 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 That require social intelligence. That require social intelligence. Complex critical thinking. Complex critical thinking. Thinking. And creative problem solving. And creative problem solving. And creative problem solving. That's what you've got to do in the future, Zoe. So uh, that's John. The idea is, this is me for this, he's, here's the job. A series of non-routine tasks require social intelligence, complex critical thinking, and creative problem solving. I presented this to ISTE. I'm on the board of ISTE. It's always fun to do things like this. But if you look at what that is, that is what teaching is. So it turns out that teachers are irreplaceable. It's going to get better and not worse for teachers. Anyway, Yahoo. So that's, that's that uh, presentation on AI. I hope you've learned something. Uh, I'd, I'd love now to open it up and take some questions. I'm going to stop sharing um, and we'll go back here. But all, all the, uh, the handout for this, I'll put in the chat room. It's, it's already there. This is the ISTE artificial intelligence impression uh, uh, presentation. So it's there as a PDF, but I'll also put it up here. And you get the added bonus of an ARVR presentation. <laughs> so, Jeff, uh, we have time for questions. Any, any, oh, we don't. Yeah, we, do. uh, yeah, yeah we, have, we have time for a couple questions. Um, okay. One of the things, one of our, uh, uh, okay, school tech directors are the big obstacle because of concerns about security and, and privacy. That is correct. And maybe this is a problem we can solve together. Uh, you remember that um, that was also the problem when we tried to get the internet into schools. It was also the problem when we tried to get video streaming into schools. It was also the problem when we tried to allow YouTube into schools. Um, a lot of schools still block YouTube. A lot of schools leave it open. So how do we do that? Security and privacy is, is one of those issues. Um, it is not a little issue. It is a very big issue. Um, 
the, the best way I can think of right now, and you may have better ideas, is to get parent permission. If you send home notes from parents, then they are saying that any information, and again, those sample letters on there, collected by an AI for the purpose of instruction um, uh, are gonna be held in a good way. AI, um, the, the FCC has given the approval for that. It's not in this slide, it's another one that said okay. So some of the agents of the federal government are saying it's okay to use AIs in a classroom. Some of them are saying, be careful. Uh, you, you really just do want parental permission. Uh, privacy is, uh, is con the concerns are getting greater and greater. As in Louisiana, we found out that maybe it's even hard to give grades anymore because they're delivered online and because they're kept in a computer system that store the grades. There are some uh, schools that are, that are looking at the laws and saying, we really can't take SAT tests anymore. SATs are school information about a level of knowledge by individual students that could be used and tracked for the rest of their lives. Remember, Donald, our current president, talking about his college grades and what a big deal it was. Should we have SAT tests? I mean, it's the thing we got to wrestle with. Anyway, yes, that's, that's the deal. Yep. Uh, uh, couple couple of FCC. If you look at the link to the FCC, it's, um, it's in one of the other, uh, other presentations, if you do a, up, oh, the chat won't be there. I'll put it in the, uh, in the presentation that I'll post up there. Anyway, yeah, it's the FCC. If, if you do a search for FCC, do a search right now and let me know what it says. FCC approves uh, artificial intelligence in uh, classrooms and see what it says. They didn't say it's okay to use an Alexa. They kind of opened the door by saying blah, blah, blah. Um, of course, AIs, do a search and see what she comes up with. The, um, of course, the AIs have gotten smarter since then, and that's always, always the thing. Anyway, yes, these look very good. Very vocal parents are anti-tech, absolutely right. Um, I mean, yes, a lot of teachers are using it and really like that. Uh, we do have to educate parents. We, we had to do it, you, you, we forget about this, but we had to do it with iPads in the old days. We had it with computers in the old days. Um, people, I'm not kidding how old I am, but uh, objected to films. So yes, there are people who are going to be very vocal. And in this case, uh, and in all cases, really, their concerns are legitimate. Uh, so we have to address them. We have to, we have to say, this is the world they live in. Are you going to really pretend that the DMV doesn't track you? Are you really going to pretend that uh, law enforcement is not going to look at your um, Ancestry.com account. They're already doing that. They're finding murderers using Ancestry. Uh, and is that something we want to stop? Do you want to stop people that have otherwise gotten away, serial murderers, because we're not going to share the data on Ancestry? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a big, big debate. But whatever it is for schools, it just means that um, this is the world they're going to grow up in and we need to start addressing it. So maybe we start to address it in a school forum like we did in the digital transformation days and say, here's what the world is. Here's what it looks like. And here's why we think we need to bring this into schools. Why, what the parts of this world that we need to show to students so that we can get them ready for the world that they're going to live in. Anyway, that's, you can't ignore the parents. Absolutely right about that. I didn't see anything pop up. You didn't see the link on, FCC approval. It's in my Twitter account somewhere, but I'll pull pull that up. Okay. Uh, are there any? Uh, okay. So they couldn't find that. Okay. No, that's a very that's a very interesting article, though. Read that one. Read that one deeply. The Silicon Valley vex that go to non tech schools. Very interesting what they what they do and what they don't do with non tech schools. I mean, there's going to be a balance where we're going to swing back and really get more hands on. I think we're going to. We're going we're gonna to begin to understand that digital doesn't mean it's just screens. Uh, that's going to be a good thing. I think we're doing that now. Uh, let me open my, I unplugged my other monitor, unfortunately, but let me see if I can find it. FCC, OKs, Alexa. I'm going to do a search for FCC, OKs, Alexa. There's no reason for upcoming games for that team at this time. Uh, I'm getting lots of hits. I don't see the one I need. 
Um, but okay, we'll, we'll do that. I'll put it up in there. Yeah. Let's see, FCC. Yeah, Brad, Brad said you're, every time you say Alexis, it's triggering his Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I just had a discussion with somebody that works at the FCC for this. So it's an interesting thing. Uh... All right, I have to find it. I'm sorry. I've got a slide on it, but you didn't do a slide there, but it's a good point. And again, it, it may have changed, but this was about three years old, I think, three or four. Uh, Paige Johnson, who worked for um, Intel and then Amazon, uh, sent me that article. She was, we were on the IST board together. So that's where that came from. I'll find it though. Are there I have one minute. I'm not going to find it in one minute, but I, but I can find it in 10 minutes. <laughs> any other questions for Hall? All right. How many people learned something? Raise your hand. Thank you. I will, um, for the, uh, for the document, Arlene, I'll, I'll get the link from Hall and then I'll send it out email to everybody. Great. Yeah. So thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Well, I want to thank everyone for taking their time hall for you being here and you know, sharing. I, I always learn. I just you amaze me every, every time, every time I hear you speak, I always pick something up new and that's, it's pretty cool. I guess, you know, you just, you, 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 you always learn, you know, you're, I'm an inveterate learner. Here's the, here's the link again for the uh, handouts. There it is. Okay. I'll put it up there. Mm. It's, just, it's, it's such an interesting world. It's so much fun. And uh, yeah, there are challenges all along the way. Digital citizenship is going to be huge, boys and girls. Um, and AI is going to be a big part of that. Yeah, definitely. I agree. So, um, and, and on behalf of uh, Brad, uh, our president, who uh, fortunately couldn't join us because we're in, in a webinar mode instead of an uh, interactive mode, uh, I know you thank everybody for being here as well and, and so forth. And, so, I guess. Thank you. I guess with that, we'll we'll uh, we'll call this one a wrap. And Th thanks, Jeff. And I'll send you the link. I'll send it to your email too. Okay, sounds great. Okay, everyone, have a great day. All right. Bye. Bye.